Hi, welcome back to Peregrine, this time coming at you from the Turku Archipelago in Finland. So over the past year, a lot of us have been cooped up inside in confinement, lockdown or quarantine, whatever, and just really wanting to go to nature. So there are a lot of cultures where this is already part of how people do things, including Finnish culture. So in this video, I wanted to show you a little bit around a Finnish cottage that's quite typical, tell you about the whole culture around the Mukielama, and of course tell you a bit of history about the place as well. So to give you a bit of cultural context about the Finnish Mugi or cottage, there are about half a million cottages in Finland. And that includes anything from a small cabin the size of a studio apartment all the way to a quite large secondary estate. And to put that in context, there are only about five and a half million people in Finland. So the ratio is quite high. And the way that people spend their time in cottages is that they usually come in the summertime maybe spend the whole of the month of July or they commute back and forth on the weekends. And this is really just a time to reconnect to nature and family. So people come here and there's a lot of manual labor. First of all, you need to chop trees, to make fire to make food or heat up the sauna. Uh, you also need to either pump water from the well or bring it with you. Uh, you also need in some cases because you don't have electricity to really make the most of the hours of sunlight. And actually that's not that difficult because in Finland in summertime you have anywhere from 20 to 24 hours of sunlight depending how far north or south you are and of course that means in the winter it's opposite <laughs> so you get really few hours of sunlight and the days really flow at a kind of strange pace again because the days are so long and there's not really that schedule there's not work so it really feels like a different way of life so there are several ways to acquire mucky. Basically, you can either build it from scratch or go from something existing. And in this case, this was an existing farmhouse where a family lived off the land for over 100 years before deciding to sell the place. And what you can see there is the main building or the parakenus, and that's where the family lived mostly. That's where they had the big stove, where they cooked, where they kept warm. And eventually, after some time, they decided to add an extension, and that's why the house is a bit of this like long shape. This place actually also has a barn where the family used to keep their chickens, pigs, horses, and now it's been repurposed into a workshop, which is kind of the hub for all the renovations that need to happen all over the property and a really cool film room. So this is to be the sauna house or sauna as you say in Finnish. And fun fact, sauna is the only Finnish word that exists in this many foreign languages. So this is where the family would come to shower, bathe, do laundry, and now it's fallen a bit into disrepair, so we've actually built a new one, and this is now a guest house. So people would come here for sauna and then take a nice dip into the water. So as I mentioned earlier, if you don't have water in the cottage, you need to bring water to the mukki. So what you can do actually is drive to any store or port that's nearby, and usually they actually have tap that you can use for free and fill up any tanks that you have. In this case, we're filling up a bunch of things. We usually have one in every room just for drinking water, washing hands or brushing teeth. And then we also have some much bigger tanks that we have for keeping hot and cold water for showering and anything related to sauna. So let's take a closer look at the water system. Now we're in the Pesuhone, which is the literally washroom connected to the sauna room. And here we can see we have two tanks. The right one is where we keep the water cold. On the left, we have the tank that we fill up with water and then we light up the stove underneath it to keep it really hot. So whenever you need to take a shower, or wash your hands, you would take a bucket, take as much cold, as much hot water as you need and make your own mix. So here we are where the magic happens, the sauna. So you can see a couple of beer cans on the windowsill that's totally usual in a finished sauna. And in a place like this, you can fit anywhere from one person to 10 people squeezed in. And for Finnish people, even though they have this reputation of, you know, not getting too close, the sauna is a definite exception where you can be in a public sauna, completely naked, completely close to complete strangers. So once the stove is on, a sauna like this can be heated up to 80, 100, 120 degrees Celsius. And what you do is you sit in here, you alternate between times in, times out, where you might take a dip in the sea, uh, a dip in the river, or just take a cold shower. And while you're in sauna, what's really important is lulu. And that's basically the water that evaporates when you throw it on the hot stones. So it's what really gives it this nice, humid, warm blanket feeling, and that's 
you know, what really hardcore people <laughs> can handle is as much loiru as possible. So saunas are really important to Finnish culture, as I mentioned before, especially going back in history, before big city living, before electricity. This is how families kept their homes warm. This is even where women gave birth because it was the most sanitary place. And to this day, it's where people go to settle business deals. This is where people open up for the first time to their families and friends. This is just really key and important to Finnish life. And just to give you another stat, there's actually more saunas than registered cars in Finland. So that tells you a bit how important saunas are to Finnish culture. And now just a few words about fires. Whether it's a stove you have in sauna, the one you use for hot water, you're gonna need to keep it hot. So it's pretty straightforward. Either you have trees on your property that you can cut down and chop, or you go out and buy firewood. So once you get your fire started, you just need to monitor it throughout the night, add more wood if needed. And actually I say night because I see sauna as a nice way to unwind after a long day, a long week, <laughs> a long year. Uh, but really you can do it any time of day. I know people who do it in the morning just to get their day started. So it's quite flexible. Here's footage of me starting a fire. I sped it up a bit because it had been a while, so it took a bit longer than usual. But don't worry, it's not always that hard, especially if the timber and the tinder that you have are nice and dry. And by the way, this kind of traditional sauna with the firewood and the stove is super cozy, but not very city friendly. <laughs> so for instance, if you go to a home in Helsinki, you're a lot more likely to find electrical saunas. In the countryside, you can have more of these fires. So of course things don't end sitting next to that nice hot fire that would be way too easy for Finnish life. No, you have to pair it up with a nice dip <laughs> in the cold water. And believe me, even in summertime, whether it's a lake or a sea, the water will still be cold. Uh, but of course the temperature difference is a lot bigger in the winter. So in that night, it was actually snowing. There was even a layer of ice over the sea that we had to break through. And that's what we call Avanto Uinti in Finnish. And Avanto means literally hole in the ice. Ice. And leave it to Finns to have such specific words for different types of ice when there's only one word that means both leg and foot. That is just so Finnish to me. <laughs> But here I am taking not so much a swim, more of a dip. And in my mind, it felt a lot longer. But looking at the footage, clearly it was just, a, you know, dip the chin and pop back out. But that's okay. And once you've been in the really, really hot sauna at 100 degrees and in the water, which was definitely below zero, the feeling that washes over you is just so much just peace and calm. You're not hot, you're not cold and you just feel really, really relaxed. <laughs> so there are many sided benefits of sauna, anything from better blood pressure health to getting better sleep. Uh, I know for me, it really helps me to relax. So that's something that I really loved when I was living in Finland. And now whenever I go back, I really make sure to get as much sauna time as I can, especially if I'm lucky enough to be close to the sea. All right, thanks for watching this video. It was a lot of fun to make. Of course, sauna is always a good time, even though cottage life can be a bit rough on the body. So let me know in the comments below, have you ever stayed in a cottage life like this have you tried sauna especially followed by a dip in the ice or are you just curious about trying it out let me know and please like this video and subscribe to hear more from me i have one more finland video coming for you before i'm back in france thanks for stopping by see you next time